guys, welcome back to another furniture refinishing episode. My name is Walesa from Alay Refurbish. And in this week's video, I'm going to teach you how to modernize an old cedar chest by using a driftwood technique. This is by far one of my favorite painting techniques. Don't want to miss out today's video. Stay tuned. The amount of beautiful cedar chests that I see at the thrift stores is insane. I can't believe how many people just get rid of them. They have become one of my favorite pieces to flip. As you may already know, we're going to start by inspecting and cleaning our piece. I see that there's something sticky inside of it. There's also some glue residue on top, so I'm going to get to that. First, I'm removing the dust. And then I'm going to be wiping it down with some towels that Simple Green has with a degreaser on it. Remember that the reason why we remove all that grease and grime that accumulates, as you're going to see here, is because if we don't, the abrasive on our sanding paper is going to push all those contaminants back in. They will want to come up after we paint and they show us bleed through. We hate that as refinishers. So to prevent that from happening, first we wipe and then we rinse. Here on the top, I'm circling the glue residue that I that I mentioned a little bit ago. So I'm using some goo gone over it. I'm going to let it sit just for a few seconds and coming back to scrape it off. Goo gone always leaves a residue, so make sure that you rinse the residue as well, like I do here. And now I'm doing the same thing to the inside of the cedar chest. In order to do something new to this piece, I need to take it apart first. So I'm removing any wood slats. I'm going to remove the base, the wood trim that you see. Basically, I want to take this down to a rectangular box. I call that a blank canvas and I'm going to be attaching a new wood frame to the front. I'm going to be adding some fabric to the front. Again, the goal is to make this piece more modern so that when somebody sees it, they want to snatch it. Now, I want to show you my inspiration piece. This is the front frame of some cabinet that I saw online. And I just been into curvy frames. So, this is the first time that I cut anything that's curvy. And I knew it was going to be challenging. I just didn't know how challenging it was going to be. In fact, I'm just going to tell you that right in about five seconds, I kind of screw it up. <laughs> As you can see, my cut is not by any means close to perfect. So this is how I repair or fix my mistake. I mix some bando. You've seen me use this two-part wood filler to fill in large gouges or cracks before. Once you add this hardening cream and mix it, you have only a few seconds before it starts hardening. You need to work fast. I had some extra, so I started just filling up all these little pretty flower details on the front. And after 15 minutes, Bondo dry like cement. So I used my Dremel to help me achieve a cleaner curve here on this edge. And it worked like a charm, guys. I don't think I've ever done this part in my videos, but I wanted to share with you what a sanding grit is. And you can take a screenshot to find out when I use each grit. Here I'm using a 120. I just want to smooth in all the bando and all the repairs that I have made. I want to give my primer something to grab on and that's why I'm in scuff sanding. I'm going to give the top a separate treatment than I do the rest of the cedar chest and you're going to see why. 
first I'm cleaning the piece with this furniture prep from Lily Moon Paint. If you are like me and like some clean lines, I like to use some tape so that I, when I paint over these areas, it keeps them from getting any paint or primer. Here I'm sharing the three main reasons why we prime. We want to keep any tannings away from our new paint job, save some paint. We don't have to apply as many coats when you apply a few coats of primer underneath your paint. And finally, I'm, there, I'm done sanding the primer. I'm wiping all the sanding dust off and now I can start painting. This is my base color. This is the color Rattan from Lily Moon Paint. I applied two coats. I like to point out here that even after I did all the wood cracking filling with Bando, there are some imperfections, but remember by looking at our inspiration piece, I'm gonna be adding some burlap. Why burlap instead of cane webbing? It comes down to cutting costs. I paid $7 for burlap versus cane webbing. Would have been $100, you guys. To fill in the seams here, I'm using my caulking gun. It's a fast drying one, so I can paint over it after 30 minutes. I'm giving the top a different treatment that I do the rest of the cedar chest. The reason being is because the top was sanded down to bare wood and you can see the wood grain. Now, the rest of it doesn't have a visible wood grain since I painted over it. The technique that I'm gonna be using is gonna give you the illusion that the entire piece has wood grain that's exposed. With the power of paint, you can also achieve a wood grain look. First, I'm gonna be gluing the fabric that I already cut down to size on the front. And right after, I'm gonna be putting the frame that I just cut down on top of it and nailing it in. Since I needed a darker gray, I mixed some black lace and Smoky Mountain from Lily Moon Paint. And then I just dipped my bristle brush, offloaded the excess paint until I left almost no paint on the tips of the brush and just feather whatever was left on my piece. I'm barely touching the surface, guys. This is the secret to make these wood grain look natural, go really slow and barely touching. This step is optional, but to soften those gray lines, I'm gonna do a color wash of rattan. This is gonna make those lines look even more natural. With a color wash, you apply the diluted color and then you wipe off with a wet rag. Wait 45 minutes until your color wash dries and then apply mudslide water-based gel stain, also from Lily Moon. We're gonna use the same technique, except I'm using my wet rag to distribute 
the gel stain and spread it out and here I'm using the same brush to continue to spread and even my finish so it looks more natural You guys have watched previous videos with me using these water-based gel stains you know that for larger surfaces like the top of this chest i like to wetten this surface before applying the gel stain this buys me a little bit more time as far as spreading and working with the gel stain before it starts settling down For almost the final step, I'm applying three coats of Lily Moon Paint top coat. And I said almost the last step because I also added some modern legs for height, but I forgot to record myself, so I apologize. And also, we can't forget to refresh that beautiful cedar inside of the chest. I'm using this furniture balm, it's lemon scented from Lily Moon Paint again, and it smells wonderful, you guys and that is the final step let's take a look at how this piece used to look and let's look at it now that it's all staged and photographed what a difference it came a long way it definitely looks more modern to me and it has some texture it has some dimension with that technique i just love this natural look that can be accomplished with the driftwood technique i hope you guys enjoy it let me know what you think of it in the comments I hope that you enjoy learning the driftwood technique. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't, and if you haven't turned on your notifications, do so, so that next time I post something, you'll know. Don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture, doesn't matter how tough things get, there's always hope for you. I will see you guys next week.